أخي صبرا على ألم الفراق Uh, brothers and sisters, I'd just like to give you a couple of um, announcements. Uh, one is a rather a message, uh, and that is that um, I recently spoke to the Uyghurs from China who were sent from one tropical island to another recently. And these are the Chinese brothers who were sent to the island of Bermuda, where they are now working on a golf course. And they are sending salams to all of you, even though they don't know you or have never seen you, and in fact come from a country that you probably didn't even know or a region that you never heard of, Turkestan, which is, of course, where the Uyghurs come from, Western China. So they give you all a Ramadan Mubarak and pray and ask that you pray for all of the people still held over there. I just want to read you before we begin and hand over to uh, Mustafiz a few words from a letter that was given by Shakir Amr to his wife. Please listen. Yes, I lost a lot of weight. Yes, I have a lot of sickness. Yes, I got short sight. Yes, my bones are aching. Yes, I got white hair. Yes, I got old. But I love to tell you my heart is still young. My mind is still strong, a lot stronger than ever. My soul got the biggest wings to fly, to fly and help others. Yes, to fly, my dear. I assure you, your husband's still the strong man you remember him to be. Not just that, but a lot wiser, a lot more patient, a lot knowledgeable, a lot merciful, a lot loving and caring, a lot more helpful and a lot stronger to fight against evil and bad. I feel I can change the world to be a better place. I feel I can rest, I feel I can restore justice so we can have a place of peace and love among each other. I feel I can defeat sh shaitan and evil by the power of Allah, Lord, the great Lord of the worlds. After Brother Mustafid speaks to you, we'll be going on to the auction, and this is where I will ask all of you, and myself and Sister Yvonne Ridley, to do what we've asked you to come here to do, and that is to support the work of cage prisoners after everything you've seen and heard and witnessed. And with that, I will ask uh, Brother Mustafid, who spoke very passionately last year at the cage prisoners' uh, dinner, and inspired people to bid and to outbid one another in that it, which is good and helping and supporting cage prisoners. Mustafid. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, what a beautiful evening, mashallah. Uh, I'll begin today's short talk with a small incident that happened in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was a drought in Medina. And uh, the Muslims, uh, they were hard to find a good meal. Abu Bakr Siddiq, anhu, he was driven out of his home from hunger uh, in midday, hoping he'd find somebody to invite him for a meal. And lo and behold, he met Umar ibn Khattab. Anhu. He was quite happy. And he asked, uh, Umar ibn Khattab asked him, oh, Abu Bakr, what are you doing out here under the midday sun? Um, you shouldn't be out here, you should be sleeping. And Abu Bakr Siddiq said, well, to be honest with you, um, I've come out looking for food and hoping someone would invite me, hoping it would be you. And Umar al-Khattab said, well, I've been driven by the same, same reason. I'm also looking for someone to feed me. And then both of them found the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he asked him, what are you doing, both of you, out in this midday sun out, outside what are you doing and they said ya rasulullah we are looking for somebody that maybe they would invite us to have some food and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi said me also i've come out out of my home under the midday sun looking for somebody who might invite me and so all three of them were looking for somebody to invite them to their their house to so they could eat a full meal and they came upon Abu Ayyub al-Ansari who then invited them to his house. To what? To some dates, some ripe, some unripe dates, some bread, some slices of meat. 
The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, and he kept on repeating this, Lahmun, wa khubz, wa rutab, wa busr. Lahmun, wa khubz, wa rutab, wa busr. And he kept on repeating this, meat and bread and ripe dates and unripe dates. And he kept on repeating this. And then he said, he repeated the ayah. The ayah in the Quran, that you will be asked on the day of judgment by Allah about this blessing. About this blessing, despite it being a drought, despite the provisions being so meager and basic, few dates and bread, that Allah will ask you, O oh, Abu Ayyub al Ansari, that you had this provision. What did you do with it to alleviate your brothers? We need to stop and think about the blessing that Allah has conferred upon all of us here in this room. For a moment. Knowing that our brothers in Guantanamo are asking for our help from all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Allah says in the Quran al Karim, وَإِنِ اسْتَنْصَرُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ فَعَلَيْكُمُ النَّصْرِ That if your brothers, they ask you to help them, and they evoke the bond of brotherhood, then you must comply. You must comply. You must help them. One of the great scholars of Islam, Ibn al-Arabi al-Maliki, a great Andalusian scholar. In his explanation of this verse, he says, indeed, our allegiance to our brothers that are in prison is unquestionable. And to help them with our physical body is an ob obligation. So much so that there should be no eye that winks until it goes forth to free those people that are in prison if the Muslims have the numbers to do so. And if they do not, then they have to spend whatever is in their hands from their monies to rescue them, to relieve them from the prisons until not one dirham remains in the hand of a person. So every single Muslim should take out whatever is in their pocket, in their bank accounts, so that no money is, there's no money that's left to help, to help free the Muslim prisoners.